There's a variety of ways to manipulate table data to make it more meaningful to your projects. We're going to look at one example here. So I've created a blank project and I've put an input object as well as three labels onto my stage and I've changed the labels to say add, remove, and show. And we're going to create a little mini database application that can add or remove items from a list and show the items or show the list rather at any point in time and it's going to do that via a table. So let's double click on the page and create our table. We'll put in the on show area my table equals curly braces semicolon. That's going to create a empty table um, called my table. So we'll press OK and we'll do the show button next. We'll double click on the show label and in the on click area we'll set up a dialog message box. And in that dialog message box we'll leave the table bl t uh, title blank but in the middle part here we'll put in a table concatenate action and we'll concatenate the contents of our table for display. I'm just going to use a space as my delimiter here and I'm going to go ahead and start at the beginning of the table and go to the end of the table so one and minus one. I'll press OK and we'll do our add button next. We need to do three things with this add button. So in the on click area we'll go ahead and we'll put in an input get text action and we're going to get the text of the input object called my input and I'm going to go ahead and store that in a variable named result. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is insert that into our table. So we use a table insert action. And we're going to name our table, which is my table. We need to choose the position where we want to insert this data. In this particular case, we want to insert it at the end of the table. So we'll go ahead and count our table. And then we will add one to that. So we'll go plus one. I just need to name our table in here. My table plus one. Okay, and then we're going to put in the final value here, which is our result variable. So it'll insert that at the end of the table. Okay, so it's counting that table and adding one. It's using that as the index to insert the result variable. Let's go ahead and empty out our input object now by using an input object set text action. Okay, so that's it for our add button. We got the text from the input object, inserted it into the list, or our table if you like, and then we erased the input object's uh, contents. So let's go ahead and press OK and do our remove button. I'll double click on the remove button, and again, we need to do a couple of different things here. First thing we need to do is get the text from the input object again. So we'll use an input object, get text action, and we'll be getting that from my input and we'll store that in a variable again named result and then we need to remove that um, index from our table so we'll go ahead and use a table remove action and we're going to go ahead and name our table my table and then put in our index value here in this particular case it's going to be the result variable now we need to also again clean out the contents of that input object so we'll use an input object set text action. And we're going to go ahead and name our input object and set the text to nil. Okay, so I'll press OK and we'll go ahead and preview our project now and see what we've got. Let's start off by pressing the show button so we can see that the list is indeed empty. There's nothing in this dialog box. We'll press OK. Now let's add an item by typing apple into the space and clicking on the add button. We'll add another item, orange, and one more for good measure, banana. So each time I'm clicking the add button. Now let's show our table. Click show. As you can see here, our table now contains the values apple, orange, banana. Now let's remove one of those values. As you can see, they correspond to position 1, 2, and 3. So if we wish to remove the orange value, we would have to type 2 into that field because that's the second item in this table. So let's go ahead and press OK and then in our sample application we'll press 2 and press remove. Now let's show again by clicking on show. As you can see the orange is gone. We've just got apple and banana. Let's go ahead and enter a couple more again. So we'll put orange back and then we'll put in pear and grape. Each time I'm clicking on the add button. We'll show our list once again 
As you can see here, we've got apple, banana, orange, pear, grape. Now, if I wanted to remove two items, for example, banana and grape, I would have to type in their index numbers. Now, if I remove the banana item first, and that's number two, grape will no longer be number five. It'll become number four. So you have to keep that in mind. So if I wanted to remove banana and then grape, I would have to type two and then four. Let's try it out. I'll press two, then remove, then four, and then remove. Now let's show our list. As you can see, they're missing now. So we've got apple, orange, and pear. So it worked, and we know that our, our um, application is working the way that we intended it to. So this is one demonstration of how you can manipulate table data, um, namely, in this particular case, add items to a table, remove items from a table, or show the data contained in a table at any given point in time. This is just a basic demonstration. Of course, you have to extend this um, further, and we will when we look at some of our examples later in this chapter. But additionally, if you're experimenting with your own uh, table applications in your projects, we encourage you to come to our forum and ask questions and take a look at some of the demonstration projects, and we can help you um, shape this uh, particular functionality to your personal projects and presentations. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide.